Hi, I'm Jules from Tapping with Jules. I'm an EFT trainer and an advanced practitioner and a social worker. And I have here with me today, Lisa Evans. Welcome, Lisa. Hello, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for agreeing to participate in this. So Lisa has volunteered to be a client for me today. Um, and we're going to do, first, we're going to do a goal session, a goal setting session. Um, and these little videos are really just about educating people on what sort of things EFT is good for, how EFT works, um, and just so people can get an idea of what an EFT session looks like, really. So thank you, Lisa, because you never really know where an EFT session is going to take you, do you? So a bit of a game That's thing true. to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We've worked together before. I think we'll be okay. Um, so Lisa, in terms of the goal, so tell me a little bit about, like, if you were, if you had like an overall goal for, say, if we have three or four actual full EFT sessions, what do you feel like you'd like to be able to achieve? Or what would be some kind of evidence that the EFT had helped, do you think? Yes. So I think um, because mine's about changing my relationship with money, I think yeah. what I'd like to see as a goal at the end would be um, to be a lot more of a conscious um, saver and mm -hmm. also potentially more of a conscious spender and they kind of weave in together. Um, yeah. And to, um, I suppose, be able to save, make a conscious effort to really be saving a certain amount of money every month or whatever and putting okay. taking that out and putting that into savings so that it still feels like there's um progress being made towards like a you know a, you're making steps forward and in, in saving money and um that kind of thing um yeah. and i think yeah like probably um if i do end up becoming more of a conscious more conscious about how I save and conserve money, then that will help with me being a lot more open to the idea of my husband helping me with the management of my business um, because yeah. he's very, you know, financial minded and he's, um, he's really, uh, all, you know, good at all about budgets and he can, he does numbers and he's pretty good with that stuff. And so he could really, I think he would be a lot of benefit to me and how I run my business if I let him come in and help me like do up profit and loss statements and see if there's areas I could be conserving or saving money and that kind yeah. of thing. And I just have this like real strong resistance <laughs> to letting him okay. in on all that information. And I don't right, really know yeah. what it is, but I suspect it's related to the idea that, um, I just like, I don't like thinking and talking about money. I don't like focusing yeah. on it. Um, I just kind of prefer to it just wing everything and just, you know, like no, no one's ever needing or wanting for anything. So it's fine. What, what does it matter? But I could be probably, yeah. you know, making a lot more of a conscious effort to, to be saving and conserving money and being a bit more responsible with it. Okay. All right. And so you said to me just before, um, I'm an impulsive spender. Um, yeah, so tell me a little bit about how it shows up for you these days, like in terms of feeling like you're not very conscious about how you spend or save money. Like what does that look yes. like? Yes. Yeah, so I guess a little bit impulsive in, in my spending. It's not, it wouldn't be something that's out of control, like I'm shopping every day, yeah. I don't do anything like that. But um, it's more like I've never really been that person who goes to the shops, to the grocery store with this list of items that you need for the week of food and those are the things you walk out with. Like I just don't, I just go yeah. in and I just go down the aisles and I pick things that I need and if I see something and I'm like, had no intention of buying that before I came in, but I thought, oh, that'd be good yeah. for lunches this week. I'll put, like I just am, you know, I kind of wig it. I don't really yeah. plan and execute a plan in that way. So in yeah. that sense, I'm sure I would spend more than what I would if I had this a bit more of a planner around meals and then having all your meals sure. picked for the week and store and buying in bulk and that kind of things. Like I'm, I'm a bit res resistant yeah. to that. Um, and then it's not like an, it's like a little bit impulsive in my spending in that I'll go, I won't spend a lot of money for a while. Like I just won't go out and go shopping for things, but, mm -hmm. and then I kind of just letting things tick along. But if I do go in to say, I'm going to go in to get my son some new school shoes, or I'm going to go buy him something from yeah. Target or Kmart or something like that. I find that when I'm in there, the same thing yeah. happens. Like I've got the intention to buy him a new pair of school shorts, for example, and I end up yeah. coming out with 
the new packet of undies for Ollie and I'll get these socks for, you know, this this thing. And then, oh, there's a shirt that I thought looked nice and I could wear that for work. That'd be a good work shirt. So I walk out with that too. And then I'm like, yeah. how the heck did I go in there for a pair of shorts and come out with a bag full of stuff that I did not really need? Okay. All right. <laughs> so that's where I think like the impulsivity kind of piece comes in for me. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, and so in terms of, so an overall goal in terms of changing your relationship with money, um, what would that look like? I'd like to be saving, putting, working towards a goal every month of putting aside money into our savings, our offset account, um, okay. so that that feels like it's making progress forward and continuing to save um, money. Yeah, so I think that would be a good goal to work towards. Okay, and would that be like, have you got like a particular amount in mind or is it like a percentage of your earnings? How would you want to do that? I would be happy if I was working towards putting aside like $1,000 a month into savings. I think that's probably achievable and I think that that would be a good amount that we would both feel happy with, that we're putting a bit of money aside every month and it's just, you know, accruing towards the offset or mortgage or whatever. Okay. So that probably feels like it'd be a good goal. Okay. So to put aside $1,000 a month, as savings into the what you're calling the offset account. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So that's not happening at the moment. Anything like no, that? No, not moment? really. Okay. Um, often my husband has always been a pretty good saver. So he always just mm-hmm. allocates and he he's not working at the moment he's in between jobs yeah. at the moment but when he was working he was always he would always allocate like a chunk of the income just straight into savings yeah. so that he felt like there was movement forward and I never really did that so I think yeah. I'd like to like start that habit because I can see how yeah. valuable that is future wise cool, okay. yeah and what would be a first baby step towards that like what do you feel like is kind of the So you're here at the moment and you want to be here and after like maybe four sessions you'll be here. But what's the like the first step that EFT could help you with that you feel would be useful to get you towards this goal? Yeah. So for my business, I think it would be a good idea to sit down again. Now it's been, you know, I've probably been going for a good 12 to 18 months and I think it would be, especially coming into tax time too, it would be useful for me to sit down, spend a bit of time actually going through profits and losses and seeing where my expenses are, how much my expenses are um, each month into the regular bills that I've got and see if there's anywhere there that I can um, make savings or things that I'm paying for that perhaps I don't even really need or use that much anymore, see if there's better deals for things, like all of that real conscious saving type like behavior <laughs> yeah activities. yeah right. I've just yeah. never really I've just never really Not yeah done, done. Yeah. okay <laughs> so I'm going to put like as the, the kind of maybe the thing that we'll work on today is is planning a time to sit down and start going through incomings outcomings and to draw up this profit loss statement that your husband said he'd like to have a look at yeah yeah okay um okay and what what do you feel like gets in the way of you doing that at the moment what do you notice comes up when you think about sitting down and doing this profit loss statement um there's a bit of an element of um i don't like it's it's kind of a discomfort um about focusing on money or thinking too much about it or talking about it like yeah. almost a little bit of a um a kind of a sense of oh money is like an uncomfortable thing to talk about like it's not I don't really yeah. like you know going into that yeah. kind of detail um so perhaps there is something there just like a kind of a um yeah like a oh I just don't really just it's not a comfortable topic to talk about or focus on so I'll just avoid it um, okay. a little bit of that yeah. and then yeah. the other thing is probably um like the idea of going through showing that to my husband and going through that with my husband um like I'll I, I feel like I'll be defensive I kind of already know I'm going to have my backup when I've got absolutely no reason to 
yeah, <laughs> silly. Okay. Um, but he's, I guess, because we're so different in our approaches, and I and yeah. I completely value how um, how financially minded he is because you know he he definitely is a better person to run those things in our relationship. But um, yeah. I can just feel like if if he starts wanting to kind of make suggestions about how I can do things better, I feel almost like I'll I'll take it personally, like I'll be a little okay. bit um, defensive and take it more as a criticism instead of just a, you know, helpful, useful advice. <laughs> so sure. potentially that gets in the way a little bit. Yeah, okay. Um, all righty. So let's just... So when you think about the overall goal is to put aside $1,000 a month as savings. Um, and if we're going to have maybe four weekly appointments, that would be a month. So by yes, the end of yep. our four weekly appointments, you would have put $1,000. So that's the overall goal. Yeah. So at the moment, how confident do you feel about that? That being able to do that at the end of four sessions? Um, and actually, how confident do you feel about doing it now before we've done any work? That's really what I mean. Uh, not super confident. Mm. So I reckon like it's probably like a 50-50 split maybe. Okay, sure. Mm. Yep. And how motivated do you feel towards that goal, Lisa, of putting aside $1,000 a month from your business account into the offset account of savings? Yeah, so motivated. Um, that's a bit of a funny one. I guess, um, like, in my mind, it all sounds like a logical, you know, like, easy thing to do. Like, I know that I yeah. still, that I've got a bit of resistance to just even really going there. So maybe it's like, a th you know, 30 to 40% motivated in, in terms of the felt sense rather than sure. me overthinking yep. it cognitively. Um, good, good, yeah. good. That's what we want. Uh, and how safe does it feel? before we do any tapping at all for you to actually make this conscious effort to put aside a thousand dollars a month um safe i think it feels the idea of putting the money aside saving saving money each each month or whatever that feels safe um yep. the idea of going right into it all with brad like i feel yeah. that there's a little element of like resistance mm. around set, that that could be safety related and it's more around like okay. you know safety I, d I don't want to feel criticized like that kind of yeah, feeling okay. you know so yeah. but overall think, in terms of it being yeah. safe to save money like safe to put money away I think mm. that that feels pretty like pretty safe like it feels yeah it feels you know like a good thing to do so 80 percent safe 80 percent and if you bring in that idea of going through the numbers with Brad what would that bring it to Probably that to like half half thing, that 50, 50%. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And just off the top of your head, how worthy do you feel of making this change? How yeah. Do you feel yeah. that you high 90, 90%, 90 to 100? Sure. Yeah. Great. Okay. And let me just check. Um, and what positive experiences could happen for you if you were able to achieve this goal? I'd be saving some money, which would be good. Um, mm -hmm. I'd feel I'd feel positive about that, and I'd feel like um, with we're still kind of making movements forward, and you know, still making progress towards saving even savings, even though we're only mm -hmm. on a sole income at the at the moment. It would it would feel good to be able to do that whilst sure. we're in this period between um, being on a single income. Yeah, um, is that does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. And what are some good reasons to stay where I am and not change anything? Um, there's like the, the good reasons. Well, because it's not going to be comfortable for me, I think. Okay. Like there's a discomfort around, yeah. oh, I really have to go in and have a look at, um, you know, potentially things that I'm not doing as well as I could be. Um, yeah. So there's like a, it's kind of more comfortable to just not go there. And yeah. there's also, there's almost like a little bit of a, well, once you make the commitment to it, yeah. um, then you're kind of locked in. Like there's that feeling of I, I, I prefer to just wing things and if this month I need yeah. this, then I'll buy it. And if this month I don't, then I won't. But that feeling of like being locked into a, a goal or a plan or having something in place, like it feels restrictive, yeah. like it feels like yeah. it limits um, me a little bit. So that there's a bit sure. of a resistance to that. 
sure. Okay. All righty. Um, all right. So I just thought it might be good to um, just make some statements. So what about if I make the statement, um, I feel comfortable talking about money or focusing on money. How true does that feel at the moment? Not very true. Um, <laughs> probably like 20%. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and is it is it the thinking about it, the talking about it, or will we just say focusing on it? I think both. I think that the talking about it like feels a bit like there's that kind of um, political correctness piece, like oh, it's not yeah. it's not nice. Like you shouldn't, you know, it's not it's not nice to talk about money. Like it's kind of a okay. not a d dirty topic. It's like that's just too strong of a word, but it's yeah, like a it um, feel. Yeah, not socially acceptable, like uncomfortable to be talking about money a little bit like that. But the focus yeah. on it, um, like being able to focus on it and really review it, um, yeah, that doesn't, it doesn't feel super comfortable because I mm. guess I know there'll be things I could be doing better and then I'm, okay. I'm having to really go in and confront that and make changes. Sure, sure. Uh, so if, if you just said then it's not nice to talk about money, so how much does that yeah. feel to you? Um, probably pretty true like 70 mm. to 80 percent yeah like it's kind of socially uncomfortable or not acceptable that kind of feeling yeah 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 um and if we think about like that idea of sitting down with brad and um when you've done your sort of profit loss statement so you said that you feel like you're likely to feel defensive about any input, even though you have no need to, and that you're going to take it personally and feel criticised. So if we were yeah. to make that into a statement, what would it be? Like, um, I get defensive about my spending or I feel um, criticised if we I feel like I'm not doing well with spending or I'm not yeah. a good saver. Or... Yeah, definitely I'm not a good saver. I, that feels yeah. true to me. Like I'm, okay. I've never really yeah. been good at saving at all. Um, yeah. So I reckon, yeah, I'm not a good saver feels probably like 80% true. Yeah, yeah. So these are what we call limiting beliefs, aren't they? So this is just something, this is a thought that I've kept thinking and it's become a belief. I'm not a good saver. I'm not a good saver. And then that becomes self-fulfilling prophecy, doesn't it? When totally. You... Yeah, it's part of your yeah. identity. So you just, you know, self sabotage yeah, almost right. in that space. That's right. Okay, now just seeing if there's any other ones we could. Um, I think there's another little element coming up, Jules, that yeah. while I'm thinking about it and feeling into it, it's kind of like um, it's a, it's something about being fun and having fun. Like that's kind oh. of an element for it, for, I guess, for me. Um, yeah like saving and budgeting and all of that feels so serious and I just like yeah. to have fun like you know okay. if we're gonna um if there's something that you know we potentially want but you know shouldn't have or we can't afford I always yeah. err on the side of well you can't take it with you you know like we should okay. be enjoying life while we have the chance to and you know I've always and who been said like, that in your life who said you can't take it with you oh my mum for sure uh, like okay. over and over again <laughs> most of my life <laughs> um, you can't take it with you and it, like an element of I've always um, you know where people say um, you work to live you don't live yeah. to work like that it yeah. really feels like it ties in for me and okay. the reason that we earn the reason we go to work to earn money is so that we can have the lifestyle that we want to have and that we can have fun and we have a roof over our heads yeah. and if we want to have a nice holiday we could do that and you know like that yeah. kind of sense of I just want to have fun. Okay. <laughs> it sounds so silly, but I think that no, probably plays. Not. I mean, they're just old in. thought patterns, aren't they? So if yeah. I say you can't take it with you, how much does that feel true? Totally, like 98%. <laughs> sure. And what about you work to live? You don't live to work. Yeah, definitely. That's like 90 to 100% too, for sure. Okay. Um, and something else. Well, something about being a conscious spender or yeah. an impulsive, like you've said, I'm not a good saver, but if if we said something like... I'm not a conscious spender. 
I think would be yeah. what that what fits. Like I, what about, when I think, yeah. oh, sorry, what, what if we say, say I, I am a conscious spender? What percentage would that be true? I am a conscious not, spender. Not very true. Um, like yeah. 10, 15% or something. Okay. <laughs> Plenty of room for improvement. Yeah, like okay. I just think, like, I remember having these conversations with my sister before, which cracked us both up because she's so um, opposite in how she manages she's more my life. Brain, and, she? Yeah, and I like really yeah. respect it because it's so, you know, like I really do. But anyway, we're That's having this right. conversation and it was funny. I can't even remember how it came up, but I remember us talking about groceries and yeah. like she would be planning meals around what would be, you know, a good budget. Like if the meat, if wow. that meat looks too expensive, then, you know, that so I'm not going to pay that else. price. We'll do something different. Wow. Whereas yeah. I've always just been like, I don't even look at the price tags. <laughs> Yeah. Like if I yeah. go in and I'm buying meat because I'm doing this meal, I just get yeah. it. I don't even look at how much it costs. Yeah, like it's right. that, that yeah, yeah. not being conscious in that way, definitely. Yeah, is a, consciously yeah. unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So let me just have a look. I'm just wondering whether it would be good to say something like it's boring to save money or it's boring to. Totally. Um, like it feels like it's um like yeah it's no fun like it's yeah you know <laughs> fun killer fun police <laughs> like to be okay. you know focused on money and worried about money and the idea of having to you know change or conserve like change your habits for that purpose feels like oh it's such a killjoy <laughs> you know? okay so what if we say it's um it's a killjoy to change my money habits or or it's it's not fun yeah to try to adjust it's just, my it's so serious like it's too okay. serious to okay. have to focus on money all the time <laughs> okay so it's so serious to have to focus on money mm. well how much does that feel true yeah pretty true like yeah 70 to 80 percent sure. reckon 70 percent Okay, and so with um, with the baby step, so the thing that we might focus on in the first session, that idea of drawing up the profit loss statement for Brad, which initially involves you, well, it's for both of you, but you sitting down to go through your expenses, incomings, outcomings, and get a kind of an accurate picture. Yeah. When you when you just think about doing that now, what comes up as an emotion or a thought or a sensation? Um, I feel like there's a, res a definite resistance to doing it. Like, um, yeah. I don't know if that's emotion, but it certainly feels like, yeah. you know, just really an aversion to it. Okay. Um, and so what, as a percentage, what would you rate the resistance to that baby probably step? Like, probably like 70%. Sure. Okay. I reckon. All right. All right. So I think that'll do for our goal setting. And what we're going to aim for today is see if we can cut that resistance around sitting down with the profit and loss statement from 70 to 50 percent okay Sounds does that good. feel like an, an okay sort of a goal yep so to reduce it from 70 to 50 so we're going to try and reduce it by 20 percent and the confidence around putting aside a thousand dollars a month as savings um just going to see if we can increase that by 10 or 20 percent yep uh, we're, we're going to go for 10 to 20 percent increases on all those um numbers so okay. confident from 50 to 60 or 70 motivated from 30 to 40 up to 40 to 50 so we're just in one session we're just looking for little 10 or 20 percent increases sure um, yeah let's see how we go all right, well, thanks. We will um, see you in the actual session. Sounds good. Thanks, Jules. Hi.